Hi, I'm Angie. I'm Mark. And this is Hindsight Farm. Hindsight Farm is a small farm nestled within a larger farm at Whitney Farmstead, north of Ann Arbor. We grow a diverse array of vegetables and use a variety of sustainable practices. Tomatoes are one of the crops we grow at Hindsight Farm. They're a reliable crop and we grow them in raised beds. Hmm. So if you can see here, we have drip irrigation on the tomatoes and this allows us to irrigate them even when there's no rain and it allows us to control the amount of water that we give them. Also, because tomatoes can be prone to disease, as you see here, they're already starting to get some of the fungus disease. Mm -hmm. uh, the water or the drip irrigation puts the water right at the base of the plants. So if we were to have overhead sprinklers that would get the leaves wet and make them more susceptible to fungus. Mm So in this bed down here, we have Napa cabbage. And Napa cabbage is used primarily in kimchi. And it's also great in stir fries and other dishes. Um, it's great storage crop. Plants are going on five weeks. So they're approaching uh, harvest time. Yeah, I can kind of see them heading up there. Yum. So this is a patch of broccoli that we have that will be ready for the fall. And in between the broccoli plants, we planted bunches of green onions. So this is an example of an experiment that we're doing where we try to interplant different crops that we think will go together. So we can harvest the green onions when they're ready and they don't have to have their own bed and then the broccoli can still grow to full size. They don't really compete with each other too much. So on some crops that we don't use drip irrigation for, we have overhead sprinklers. And the sprinklers are nice because they help us to germinate crops like carrots that we've direct seeded. And germinate means? And germinate is when the seed opens up and begins to grow. Yeah. Here's another example of some intercropping we did, um, basically planting two things in one bed. That is some cilantro right there. Looking good. Uh, we planted that, what, the same time as we planted the broccoli? Uh, the cilantro was planted a couple weeks after the, we planted the broccoli. Okay, so yeah, it's about the right time. We're about to harvest it for the first time. <laughs> And yeah, after we done, we're done harvesting the cilantro, then we can just wait for the broccoli to come out. So this is a bed of beets. It still has a couple more weeks to go before they're ready. And beets are a great crop because you can grow them all the way from early spring to late fall. They're uh, frost tolerant and the roots store really well. So they're a good storage crop. There's the close up. The baby beet. Cool. What else we got? Oh, kohlrabi. Such a weird vegetable. That is a kohlrabi. That purple spherical thing is what you eat. You can eat the leaves too, though. Yeah, kohlrabi is another great vegetable and 
they actually have varieties that grow to be 20 pounds and they're like oh big as basketballs and those are uh, storage varieties so they can also be a great storage vegetable people put them in pickles they're great pickled or you can eat them raw in salads this is our patch of green beans here they're a french filet variety which means that they grow to be longer and skinnier than your normal green bean and they're more tender and i think they're a little sweeter too so this is a example of this variety nice maxibella is a variety oh nice so you can eat them raw <laughs> We didn't think that it would be an essential crop for our first season, but we decided to grow a few and we've been harvesting buckets of these every week. Um, we are growing a couple varieties, but this is my favorite. So beautiful. So then right next to our eggplant we have our peppers. I just picked this one because it's pretty gorgeous. Um, it's a warm season crop, so yeah, we have to start all of this stuff from seed in our greenhouse way early on in the season uh, in order to get fruit from these plants because we are living in the northern climate and uh, it's, uh, we don't have enough days with enough sunlight to plant them outside to begin with. We have to start them inside and then move them outside and hopefully they continue to grow like these have. Um, you know, we grow a combination of sweet and hot peppers. These are kind of cool here. We grew a lot of cayennes this year. Um, something you might not know about peppers is that they all start out green. So this is a cayenne. Uh, it just hasn't turned red yet. It's not ripe yet, basically. It's still spicy and you can still eat it this way. But um, probably want to wait till it gets somewhere like, more like that. And that's going to be a spicy pepper. So I just wanted to show you uh, the transplants, the baby seedlings that we were talking about earlier. Uh, we seed them directly into these cell trays. So you can see this one has all these individual cells. This is a 72 tray. Um, so you just put the growing medium in there, seed directly into each cell. And then by the time they get big enough, you can kind of just pull that out um, and plant it. And this will become a lettuce head. Uh, 45 days from planting. You know, in the beginning of the year, we, we start all of our seedlings in our greenhouse, which you can see from the outside. The inside is a little bit messy right now, but that is where we started all of our baby plants in the spring, but now that it's warm enough, we just kind of start them outside and they've been doing just fine. So this field is kind of a happy surprise field for us. Um, as we have said, we are actually renting our land from another farm. So we're like the farm within a farm. Um, hopefully our next video will be a tour of the greater Whitney Farm, but we are Hindsight Farm inside of Whitney Farm, and at Whitney Farm, they make an ice rink every year. Um, turns out it's a nice, flat little piece, so we uh, had the opportunity to plant some veggies in it over the summer, because obviously they're not using it for the ice rink right now. So we have a few different successions of carrots over here. So you can see the really baby carrots right here. And these are like the older carrots. Those are like the oldest ones that are here. And then over here, it's like kind of in between. You can kind of see these little guys here. Um, so a lot of these are storage carrots. We hope to keep these uh, in storage throughout the winter so we can eat them fresh all winter long. And then we also have some more beef. Some really nice beans. Um, and then over here are some watermelon radishes. I wish we could pull one for you because they are gorgeous. But the reason they're called watermelon radishes is they're green on the outside. And when you cut them open, they're bright red. Um, they still taste like a radish. They're a little sweet, 
Uh, they don't taste like a watermelon, but they look really rad. Um, so we really like to grow those uh, in the fall. We hope you enjoyed this tour of Hindsight Farm. Stay tuned for more fall farm tours coming up soon. Thanks for coming.